Hello, in this small presentation, I'm going to tell you about the accommodation of the eye lens. Eye lens, you know, is a biconvex lens, right? And it keeps increasing and decreasing its curvatures, or you can say it keeps increasing and decreasing its power of convergence of the beam of light striking it. And that's called the refractive power of a lens. Now, if you presume this is the eye lens and this be the principal axis, right? And this you can presume as the retina, right? So, the rays of light which you presume in this, you know, it's a relaxed lens. Like when you're seeing at a distance object, it's presumed that the rays of light are striking parallelly on the lens. And its job is now to converge these rays of light to a point at the center in the visual axis on the retina and that point is called the fovea centralis. Got it? So that's the purpose of the biconvex lens. Now, if this at the same time, you know, in a relaxed position, if you think about an object placed closely to the eyes, like, you know, within the focal length and this object of near vision will be you know, striking the lights, the light rays will be striking divergent. So being divergent lights, this lens, if it's a relaxed lens, this image will be formed somewhere behind the retina. Got it? So that is the purpose when you are looking at a closely placed object, the eye lens needs more of power to converge the divergent beam of light onto the same point and that is the fovea centralis. Got it? So that's the requirement for accommodation. Now let's see how this eye lens undergoes this accommodation. Okay? Okay, now let's do a diagram to explain the accommodation of the eye lens in close vision and in far vision. First, let's start a diagram for far or distant vision. And here I'm going to draw is for near vision, near or short vision. Okay. So let's draw this with the cornea and this is the eye lens I mean eyeball I mean eyeball and here is the optic nerve arising and similarly here you can draw is the cornea this is the eyeball and this be the optic nerve you know it's arising here from this optic disc which is like two to three millimeter medial to the center uh, you know fovea centralis Okay, now let's draw the eye lens because this is a relaxed eye. So here the eye lens will be flattened. Flattened means it will be thinned out, less of curvatures. And because you're focusing an object in a closely placed distance, so this eye lens will be nearly spherical and constricted. <laughs> And now what I mean, we'll draw is the choroid. You know, what we've used, the black color is for sclera, let's presume. And now we're going to draw is the ciliary body. Ciliary body, you know, is an extension of the choroid. Both the sides you can draw. This is ciliary body. It's made up of ciliary muscle and it continues anterior to the eye lens in the form of iris. Got it? So, we are going to talk about this ciliary body here. This is the ciliary body we are talking about both the sides. Similarly, here also you can draw is now you to see the difference that the ciliary body has come closer to the eye lens and the eye lens itself also has decreased its diameter. So this is the, you know, the choroid and again this is the retina, right? So and you know this is the ciliary body, 
which we are going to talk about. This is responsible for this accommodation of the islands. You should also keep drawing, you know, it helps uh, to learn also. Okay. Now, one more thing is missing that is between ciliary body and the islands, you have these uh, zonules or, you know, these are lenticular fibers or zonules. You can say I have drawn it like this. These are zonules or lenticular fibers with which the eye lens is attached to the ciliary body, right? So, the difference now you see is the purpose, again the purpose is to focus the uh, light on the principal axis because the light rays are coming parallelly, so they, lay, they need less amount of converging power, while here this object is placed at close vision, so the light rays are striking divergent and it needs more amount of converging power, so the eye lens becomes, you know, shrinked or you can say it becomes nearly circular, so that it increases its power of convergence just to converge the beam of light again on the fovea centralis. Now, you can see that what has, you know, the changes has been brought about one, the three factors involved in like accommodation, one is the ciliaris muscle and the other is these zonules or lenticular fibers and the lens itself. All the three, you know, participate in this constriction of the eyes and for accommodation to increase in, you know, power of refraction. So, this is like, you know, I um, mean, how these muscles, you know, when, when actually, you know, you can see in this diagram, this eye lens is being, you know, held in position and rather it's been in a relaxed position. You can say it's flattened because these zonules are actually uh, stretched. So, when zonules stretch, it is stretch the eye lens and the, uh, you know ciliaris is relaxed but now when ciliaris ciliaris muscle contracts right so being contracted this uh, muscular uh, ring formed by the ciliaris you know it's a concentric i mean a ring shaped muscle surrounding the anterior portion of the eyeball so being a circular muscular ring when it contracts right so it decreases the diameter of this uh, ciliaris muscle and when it decreases the diameter, these zonules which were stretched, they will relax or they will lax. So, when they will lax, the eye lens will being, you know, this eye lens is actually a pliable structure. Pliable means, you know, it has its own cohesive forces, internal forces when it lifts free, right, because here the zonules are lax which were actually strengthening and pulling it. But now when the zonules relax, it itself becomes circular because of the internal forces. Got it? So, eye lens actually is being stressed. That is requiring force. But when I, I, you know, the zonules relax, the eye lens itself becomes circular and because of its internal cohesive forces. Got it? So, let us draw another diagram so we can see in a different view. Here now I am drawing is, uh, yes, so this you are seeing is the inside of the eye, both the sides. This you are seeing is the inside of the eye and uh, you know, from posterior, posteriorly you are seeing uh, the posterior view of this um, ciliaris muscle. So, this ciliaris muscle you know is a circular. <coughs> circular ring of muscles like right? this is how the ciliaris muscle is placed in the inside of the eyeball right and here you are seeing is the eye lens this is the eye lens got it and as i told you this is a relaxed position right so and so, zonules which are stretching it actually, these are the zonules or the lenticular fibers which are stretched and they are pulling the margins of the lens and they are attached to the ciliary 
body. So, this way they are actually radially these zonules they are pulling the islands radially and making it flattened or in short you can say it is decreasing the curvatures because this diagram you know what I have drawn is for distant vision. And this you know is a relaxed eye and this distance vision actually is a relaxed vision, right? It is in a relaxed state. Now, when you are focusing for sh short vision or near vision, what happens is that this ciliaris muscle now will constrict ciliary muscle constrict and you know it has M3 muscarinic receptors for the action of parasympathetic fibers. So, because of this parasympathetic innervation this ciliaris muscle it constricts right it constricts when it constricts this circular muscle band formed by this ciliary body the muscular ring this formed by this ciliary body it constrict and doing so it actually it decreases this decreases the diameter of the muscular ring of the ciliaris muscle. So, when this decreases the diameter this eye lens of course, eye lens will also become smaller and spherical and not because of this direct effect of ciliaris muscle. Ciliaris muscle when it contracts it does not implies its effect of force directly on the eye lens rather what happens is these zonules which were pulling the eye lens right they were they now become lax these zonules now become lax and the zonule when they, be, when they become lax the eye lens automatically shrinks because of the internal cohesive forces I told you it is like a pliable structure and a pliable structure is one which is when left free without any external forces it tries to accommodate within a smallest volume that is how is eye lens the human crystalline uh, lens. Got it now? So, you have seen that what actually happens is there are three three important things which you are seeing here. One thing is uh, let us write it out uh, write it down one thing is uh, contraction contraction of ciliaris ciliaris muscle is one factor, but this it is not like ciliaris muscle contracts to shrink the islands. Remember, ciliaris muscle contracts to decrease the diameter of this muscular ring, the ciliaris ring. So, it just decreases the diameter of this muscular ring and with that these zonules, the next thing is that the zonules relax. Zonules or lenticular fibers, they relax or lax. So, when they become lax, the eye lens is set free. Free means there is no external pulling forces. So, because of its intrinsic, you know, lens is pliable. So, because of its internal forces, there is a cohesive forces which bring its shape to nearly a spherical structure or in short it increases its curvatures so as to increase its power of refraction got it now so i hope you have understood that what are these three factors with which the eye lens contracts or accommodates occur to focus a near object onto the retina got it so let's draw the next diagram Okay. Now, let us draw two diagrams. One here I am drawing is 
the eye lens again the eyeball and again a eyeball here also okay and this be the principal axis both these eyes okay and as i already have mentioned that this is a relaxed lens a flattened lens and here it's a circular or spherical lens this is for distant vision and this is for close vision okay so now presume both the examples which i have already described yellow we using is for the distant vision so the rays of light coming striking parallelly here they will actually this eye lens is relaxed means it's nearly flattened having less of curvatures means less of refracting power so the because the rays of light are parallelly striking they need less of convergence and that's how this eye lens helps to project or converge the beam of light to strike onto the fovea centralis one thing is clear but when you are looking at a distant object at the same time imagine when you are looking like a far off thing the objects near to you will not be sharply visible because now you see that this is a closely placed object but your eyes are looking at far off so these rays of light because they are closely placed they will strike divergently on your eye lens and at this point your eye lens is a relaxed state so this eye lens i mean you know this is a flattened lens so this will have less of convergence power so what will happen now this object plays Uh, near to your eyes will be image the image will be formed somewhere behind the retina and that's how the image actually will be this much you are seeing here this much will be the size of the image and it will be a blurred image not a clear image got it so now at this point you find you tried now you decided to look at this point that's a blue color thing so here let's see again this in this with uh, diagram you are not focusing on to this point this point is the closely placed object and because <coughs> sorry <coughs> the closely placed object <coughs> and because it's a diverge i mean you know it's a globular lens circular i mean you know more of curved lens so it has more of you know power of convergence so it will now actually force these lights or bend it further so that the rays of light strike onto the retina because having of more of power of convergence now at the same time when you are looking or you are reading in a book and without moving your focus you know just because you have a field of view you will not be able to focus upon the objects at far off distance why because look here now at the same time when you have rays of light coming from parallelly from the far off source now because it has enough amount of convergence power so what will happen this objects which are formed at far off their images will be formed um, before the retina and therefore these images will not be even even if even if it you know strike back different uh, after crossing then also the image will be blurred so got it now so that's how this is about the uh, accommodation of the eye lens now remember that how does when you focus on a close object three things happen remember these muscarinic m3 receptors are innervated by parasympathetic fibers of the ciliaris muscle ciliaris muscle constrict it doesn't means remember that ciliary muscle is constricting the lens ciliary muscles are constricting constricting to decrease the diameter of this mus ciliaris muscular ring onto which the zonules are attached and when ciliaris this muscle decreases the diameter of the muscular ring so the eye uh, the zonules relax and the zonule lacks 
and the uh, lens it automatically sets free and it shrinks or you can say it increases its curvatures and that's how it you know in, increases its power of convergence. Now um, suddenly when you plan to look at a distance again so now what happens now this ciliaris muscle actually is relaxed you know you need your you know uh, power of accommodation the constriction of the pupils uh, you know when people you know the ciliaris muscle constrict it decreases the diameter but when you are looking at distance actually the ciliaris muscle relax when ciliaris muscle relax the zonules become taut or you can they become become this lenticular fibers they become stressed and when they become stressed they pull the you know this islands peripherally radially and decreasing this its uh, you know curving uh, convergence power of flattening the lens got it so